of our design pattern. So previously, uh, in the playlist link below the like button, we have a video of actually building this on a breadboard. And now we're going to write the code for our circuit. So we're going to be looking at finite state machines. A finite state machine is a mathematical model that can be in exactly one state at a given time. It's a common model that is designed for code in microcontrollers. In this lab, we're going to implement a simple FSM example. For this lab, we're going to be using a traffic light application, which is why we chose the green, yellow, and red LEDs. We're going to look at this figure below. So we have this. We have a north-south road, and there's a traffic light right here. We have an east-west road. Now, when our north-south traffic light is green, our east-west road should be red, so they don't crash into each other. And the same thing for the other way. So if our east-west traffic light is green, if the site is green, well then this one obviously has to be red, right? Because we don't want them to crash into each other. And then we're going to go from green to yellow to red, and then we're going to go green on this one so this car can pass. So as seen in the figure above the traffic light application, it's a two-way intersection with perpendicular roads going north-south and east-to-west. A timed light will allow one light to pass for a period of time then transition to allow the other road to pass. The finite state machine of this traffic light can be seen below. So this is our traffic light and this is going to be the finite state machine for it. First, we have our all stop east west. So when our time is less than five seconds, we're going to move to the next one. Time is less than five seconds here. We're gonna have the north south stop. So that means this north south traffic light is going to stop. And the west is going to pass, this one right here. It'll pass um, because it'll be green. And this is going to be, we can see that the timer is less than 10 seconds, so this is going to run for 10 seconds. Once our timer is equal to 10 seconds, we're going to move on to our next transition. We're going to transition from the east to the west. And this is going to be less than 5 seconds because we're going to cycle down from green to yellow to red. Then we have a timer. Once it equals to 5 seconds, we can see we have less than 5 seconds. We would be incrementing our timer. And so now our timer equal to five, we move on to the next state. And we have an all stop north south. And our all start north south is where our north south is going to be all stopped. This is also the reset state. So when our code first starts, this is going to be stopped and this should be green. And this is going to run for five seconds. Once the timer is equal to five, we go to the next state, which is a north south past east west stop. And this is going to run for 10 seconds. So the north-south is going to pass. This one up here, this green car is going to pass. East-west is going to be stopped. Then we, once our timer is equal to 10 seconds, we go on to the next one. We transition north-south. The timer is less than 5 seconds. So with our transition, we're going to go from our north-south. And then we are going to do an all-stop east-west. So the east-west is stopped. We've transitioned here. And we can transition back to the north-south. Stop east-west pass. So the east-west is now going to pass. We're basically alternating between the two lights, which one can go. And so this is going to be a Moore state machine. A Mealy state machine changes its output based on the present state and input. So if we had like user input, right, then we would be using a Mealy machine. But since everything is contained inside of here, it's really self-containing. That's a very general kind of description, but since it's self-containing, then it's a more, because there's more inside of it. With a melee, we have to have inputs, and so we're using a more machine. And then we have our um, state table right here that tells us how we would code this. So we would choose this current state, we would choose our time delay, once this time delay happens we move to the next thing, so it's our transition, right, that's the next state. Um, and then we have this here, that's also um, our next state for the time delay. We'll look at this first one. All of these are very similar. So this first one we have the north-south pass slash east-west stop. If we look up here, that's going to be this first one right here. North-south pass, or north-south stop, or okay, so it's not that one, it's going to be this one over here. North-south pass, east-west stop. This one right here. So we can see the timer is going to run to less than 10 seconds. Timer delay is less than 10 seconds. And we want to stay at this, right? We are looping back here. After 10 seconds, we're going to transition to the north-south. So once our timer delay is equal to 10 seconds, we transition to north-south. And then we're going to have our green LED be 1 for the north-south. 
And then these LEDs are going to be zero, right? Because they're not lit. We just want the green one. And then our for our north-south, the east-west, we should have the red LED be one. And then for the transition, our yellow delay is going to light. And then our red or um, LED that's red is still one until we get to this this next one where we do an all stop and both lights are red and then the next one we're going to do the north south stop so this top one is going to stop east west path so this bottom one should be green which it is and then we're going to do the same thing just down here so that is our traffic light controller finite state machine um, it's good to really understand this so that we understand the code now we're going to understand the design of our finite state machine we're going to implement it with our microcontroller, which is on our breadboard, and our six LEDs. For the next part, we're going to need these six LEDs, they're going to be three different colors. We've built that previously. Now, we're going to open the stm 32 cube IDE. This is super easy to install. You can just search it up. It's going to look like this. So that's going to launch, and we're going to match. We want to match this figure below. So we can control the pinout, and that's the important part. So once this launches, we can click a workspace click launch and it should launch in it might take a while to load because this is the first time I've installed it on my on this machine so we can just drag it over here we can go to file we're gonna go to new and then we're gonna go to STM32 project if we're working with this board and so now it's gonna load up really quickly um, I'm going to um, let it load it's gonna download the files and then it should take us into a board selector once it's initialized. And now we need to actually connect our board. So I haven't done that. I'm just going to plug it in. It has to use a data cable. So plugging this into the computer, it is now connected. And currently, um, the LEDs should not be lit. We're going to go to board selector. And we want to make sure we choose the right board. The board I'm using is going to be the Nucleo dash, and then it is a zero, or no, it's an F, zero, no, F, zero, three, and then it is the 1K6. So it should be this board right here, and we want to make sure we actually select the board. Uh, if we scroll down a little bit, we can actually see some of the board right here, the configurations, the pinout of what we're going to be using it does indeed match so this is what we're going to be using we are going to just select this and we're going to click next we do need a project name so I'm just going to call it um, 2.3 because this is the sec third part of the lab or the second part of the lab so 2.2 we want to not change any of these we'll click next and then we'll click finish through here we're going to initialize all peripherals with the default mode we'll click yes we want to open the debug perspective so we'll click yes to this and now it's going to render our UI and it's going to load. So this is our pinout and I'm just going to move this off the screen onto my other one and I will um, design the pinout just looking at it here. So we know that our pins and maybe I can bring up a picture. We know the pin that is input is going to be the one that's connected to our blue wire because the red wire is just power. And so once our circuit is complete, there we're going to have a closed circuit once our power button is pressed right it's going to go into our um, blue wire into the board and so we need to wire it for that however for this first part of the lab we're not um, dealing with the push button yet the push button actually comes later so before we do the push button what we need to do is wire up the outputs so that our leds can even get lit it's going to be an infinite loop it's not going to stop it's going to loop through all of our lights. The part of this lab that we have to do is we have to code it to where it stops at a green light and then it's going to cycle down from green to yellow to red and then it is going to go from um, green to yellow to red to the other one while the other one is red and then go back to green for the other one. So once we have all of our packets installed we can begin here it is just, it's going to take a while because it has to download so much and prepare for our workspace. But once this is done, we have our pinout here. Um, we can go online and actually search for the pinout for the specific uh, model. We can go Nucleo 32F303 pinout. And then you're going to come up with something that looks like this. 
and the pinout is right here. And so you can use this pinout to actually look at your board and um, mark the pins. So for this pinout, we're going to select PB5 because PB5, if we again look at the pinout, PB5 is tied to our um, D11. And so we know we're using our D11 as an output because it's outputting to our LED. So we're going to select it as output. Same thing with our PB4. It is also output, so we're going to make it GPIO output. And then our A11, it's to the bottom right. So our PA11 is a GPIO output. Um, and then we next have a PA0. The PA0 is A0. So this is a GPIO output. Now we have a PA1. The PA1 is our A1 on the board. So this is GPIO output. And then lastly, we want our PA3. And the PA3 is going to be a GPIO output. So once that's done, once our LEDs are wired, that's in the previous video. So if you haven't done that, you can stop there. And it'll be in the playlist link below the like button right around this video. And it is a Lab 2 video. Um, once we have this wired up, we're going to want to go into System Core. Then we want to go into GPIO. Now, we have all of these here, right? And we can change the GPIO output value, the GPIO mode, the pull up, pull down, and the maximum output speed. But we don't want to do any of that. What we want to do is we want to label these. And in labeling these, the important part is to actually label them and spell them correctly. For the code that we're given, we want it all to be in uppercase. So I'm going to caps lock. And we want to write out these specific values. So we're actually going to be giving these names. This is going to be our east west underscore. Um, and this is a green underscore LED. So that is that. And then we can click on the next one. And this next one is going to be an east west underscore yellow underscore LED. And this next one we have here we are going to do a east west underscore red underscore LED. So those are all of our east west stuns and now we got to do our north south. So for this one the PA11 it's going to be a north south underscore red underscore LED. Next one we have a north south underscore green underscore LED. And then lastly we have a north south underscore yellow LED. Now it's important to actually double check all the names for these because if you don't then your code is not going to run and you're not going to know what happened because this is super annoying to debug. From here what we can do is we're going to want to go to I think NVIC or no not NVIC we're fine with GPAO. We've labeled everything everything is good and from here, all we need to do is, again, make sure our board is built correctly as well. And then we're going to go build our project. So we're going to click project. We can do build project. And it should build our project for us. Um, and it might take a while as well. So it can refresh. And we want to generate code. I must have missed that or misclicked. So we're going to generate code. And we're going to um, open the C slash C++ perspective. And so it should open this. It's going to use this tool. It's going to run some of this down here. Our build has finished. Should have zero errors and zero warnings. Next video, we're going to actually talk about the code. This was just the setup for our code.